Hi there, thanks for joining. Today we're gonna paint a sky with some clouds. So I want to show you an approach, but th this approach to paint the sky and the clouds is always the same for every subject. It's always about a keen observing and mixing of colors and uh, the tonal values. Uh, they are uh, especially important. Not every sky, every cloud is the same, of course. You have different colors in the sky, uh, depending on the weather and depending on uh, which time of the day it is and clouds are always different. Sometimes you don't even have clouds, but yeah, the approach is the same for all. And what I like to do is prepare some main colors on my palette. That way I can first focus on the most important colors and tonal values that I see. And then I can easily paint with all the colors that I have prepared on my palette. I first start with a very simple sketch and you can paint along if you want to, if you want to practice. I will put a link to this photo that I've uh, taken from unsplash.com. I just make a slightly darker value than my canvas is. And I'm not gonna stick too much to the photo. I, I, I use it as reference, but I don't have to be too precise about it. But I, I like the fact that here is sort of a hill like this. And that's enough. And uh, the trees, I will leave them, uh, I don't need them that much. But then here we, I will accentuate, I will uh, paint in the darker parts, so the, the spaces in between the clouds, so to speak. So it goes like this, so that will be all a uh, sky color. And then, uh, yeah, a little bit to the left of the middle, there we have this big outline of this cloud here and I just sketch it like this very big straight lines I don't have to be too precise here is a darker part in the cloud and here it goes like this here is a light part like that that's all I need and then you have some light clouds here of course here you see some light clouds and here it's a little bit more gray. Here is a very light part. Okay, like this. And I think that's enough for now. Maybe I can just indicate slightly these other type of clouds. These clouds are more refined, have more precision in it. These clouds are more subtle. You almost, yeah, this is more than enough for a sketch. So I'll take some cyan. I need white, of course. I just uh, add a little bit of magenta. Don't need too much of it. And maybe a little bit of cadmium yellow middle. For the hills, I just add some permanent green. This green is way too saturated. When you see this, it's it's less saturated color. I can paint the green first and then we can uh, focus on the sky. So, and if you compare it, you can see that my green is way too bright. It is way too vivid. If I add a little bit of a complementary color, then I can break down this uh, saturation. So if I add a little bit of magenta in this case, you see, my green gets less vivid. Well, this is good enough for the most part, you see. So here is a lighter part. Now, then I'll take a little bit of this over here. So this color is good for here and here it gets a little bit darker. Well, I, I, I'll add some extra magenta. Maybe that will do the trick and maybe not. Maybe it gets a little bit too brown now. Yeah, that's a little bit too brown. That's no problem. Then I add some uh, cyan to it. And now we have a nice second color. Uh, so I'll start off with the lighter part, I think, over here. And again, the photo is just for reference purposes, so it doesn't always have to be exactly the same, but we use it to practice the technique, of a technique for painting clouds. Now I just wipe my brush a little bit, excessive paint, I wipe it out. 
but I don't have to clean it thoroughly. So now I go to the, oh, <laughs> to the darker color, like this. And I'll add that to this part. See? And here I leave some space because I see a, a slightly more yellow color there at the bottom. So nice video, isn't it? It's about painting clouds and all we are doing up till now is painting grass. <laughs> so like this. Now I'll add some yellow to my green here for this part here, you see. And that's not uh, enough. I need a little bit of yellow, but also a little bit of magenta, I see. So I just add that through it. Don't be too precise about it, but it's just a little bit of a subtle variation for here. You see, it's just, it, give it, it gives it something extra. And you know what? We can also here, uh, you got all kinds of variations, of course. You can maybe do a little bit of white on your brush, mix it to, through the green stuff that you have and well, put it in like this. Uh, maybe a little bit more yellow sometimes uh, around like here. That's enough. Keep it simple. You see how easy it is to paint loose when you have your colors mixed in advance. So uh, the only thing I had to do was concentrate on the painting because the colors were already on my palette. And that, that, that makes painting a lot more fun and way easier. And as you can see, we have uh, several things going on. We have a subtle transition from darker blue to lighter blue. That's one thing. Then we have these clouds, these very subtle clouds that are a little bit misty. They dissolve a little bit in the background. And then you have these clouds that have more contrast and have more detail. They stick out a little bit more. I have to change the camera a little bit, I see. So, I'm sorry. Now you can see the whole photograph. When you see, oh, these are subtle clouds, then you have to take care that you don't exaggerate the contrast between the tonal values yeah, or the colors. So when we go pre-mixing, we can make the, this sky color, for instance, like this, or like this. This is the most that I see, yeah, the, this, this part, this sort of blue color. Then these, although we might think that it is way more light, than the background, in reality it isn't. So we have to pre-mix a color that is subtle, that is not that much lighter than this color. And that's the whole trick. If you see that, then it becomes very easy to make nice subtle skies with subtle clouds. And uh, this, these clouds here, we, we take a little a bit of another approach, but I'll show you. My, but let's pre-mix first, I'm uh, talking all the time. Now it's time to do stuff. So I'll take a fair amount of cyan. Huh? You see that cyan has much in common with the color I see here. It's a sort of a neutral blue that I see in the sky, in this, in this photograph. Uh, but my blue is a little bit too dark. So I'll add a little bit of white. We start off huh, to make this color lighter. We use white, titanium white. Well, it's it's almost right away spot on. The sky here is a little bit more purplish. So uh, the blue can go two ways. A blue can be more green, or it can be neutral, of course, or it can be more to, towards green, or it can be more towards purple. And in this case, this part on my photo, in my print, because all printers print differently also, but uh, in this case, I stick to what I see. So I add a little bit of magenta to my blue to give it just that slight bias towards purple. And now I'm gonna compare and I think so. It's not that bad. Okay, then we have the darkest part. Then I concentrate on a slightly lighter part because um, when I make that in advance, it will make painting way more easy later on. So I'll take some cyan and I'm going to add some white, of course, to make it lighter. So uh, maybe that's a little bit too much. We'll see. And as you see, pre-mixing colors, that takes a little bit of time, but 
you can always make it nice. Yeah. Take a little bit of coffee while you're doing this and put the radio on. And just enjoy mixing colors. Again, this color also needs a little bit of magenta, so I'll add a little bit of magenta to make it to give it more of a bias towards purple a little bit. It's just slightly. And now I just want to make a third color for the lightest part that I see here. I'll take some cyan again. And of course, if you made enough of this mixture, you can also take a little bit of this mixture and make it lighter. So there are se always several ways to do it. And now that I'm uh, talking to you, uh, I don't always do it in the most logical way because when I'm talking and doing this a part of my concentration goes to the talking as well because I'm uh, of course not a, an English uh, native English speaker I'm Dutch and well I'm trying to get used to talking in English of course in these uh, videos but it all takes a little bit of your processor <laughs> this color as well the, the the tonal value is correct this time uh, now I'm going to add a little bit of magenta here as well that magenta is such a weird color and as children we never get it uh, we never learn about magenta at school eh? we always learn red yellow and green uh, red yellow and blue that there are the primaries but uh, in fact Magenta is a primary. Okay, so now I have the three base colors of the sky. So these colors, are for the subtle clouds, so to speak, are just a little bit lighter. Uh, and so we are gonna pre-mix them now. So I take a little bit of this mixture, just a tiny amount, and I put it here. And I add a little bit of titanium white. It's better to, exa to exaggerate too little than too much, <laughs> if, you, if that makes sense. But you can always add more contrast afterwards, that's no problem. But if you have too much contrast right away, then the painting gets difficult and it will, will not work. So, better to be a little bit more careful at the beginning. Ah, I've got a beautiful color for here, for these parts. So I leave this and then I make another slightly lighter mixture. For, so for here. Same color, but slightly lighter. No, it's maybe a little bit too light already. So I add a little bit of cyan again. See, before you know it, you get too light. Now I have started with the darkest parts of these more pronounced clouds. And these clouds have more contrast. The contrast between the lightest part and the darkest part are uh, more pronounced, but the lighter part are just very light. The darker parts come close to the uh, tonal value you see here. So again, although we might experience these clouds here, the, the, the darker sides as white, they aren't white and they have a, a tonal value that might be darker than you think. It is, in, in, it is close to the value of the sky. Here, in between, the value is slightly darker. When you squint your eyes, you can see a difference between the darkest part of the cloud and the grayish blue sky color that you see there. I've mixed some cyan, magenta and white to make the tonal value for the darkest uh, parts in the cloud, but this is way too dark. So, I add some extra white, keep a little bit of that and I make it lighter here. Let's have a look. Is this a good tonal value for here? It's too dark, I think. Add some more white. So I, I focus on tonal value now and I will focus on color after that. That's better. The right tonal value. Now I clean my palette knife and I'll add some yellow because that's the third um, complementary color that I haven't added up till now. And now it gets a little bit too green. No worries, we can always add some magenta to make it uh, more gray again. So it's always finding a balance between the three primary colors to get the correct gray, of course. 
so this is this yes that's that's good okay so i have the darkest value but there are all kinds of variations of course and i'll, I'll make a lighter value as well a slightly lighter value so i can when i'm painting i can easily take some lighter value if i want to so i can play kind of play with uh, with the paint like this this is lighter and maybe another lighter value like this you see just prepare some colors and have fun later on so take your time for the pre-mixing now a slightly lighter variation again but still it contains a little bit of gray so the lightest parts in the clouds what we may conceive as uh, white are still not uh, exactly white and here it contains a little bit more of yellow and here maybe a little bit more of magenta but i leave it as it is it's no problem now i want to start with the sky and these subtle clouds and a handy thing to make things smooth and to make your paint dry less quickly uh, for acrylics is a mystifier and uh, the, does, these things are used by barber shops yeah, but the barber uses them to mystify the hair to make it slightly moist you can from a distance spray some mist on your painting like this very subtle not too much but uh, i don't know uh, of course here now in uh, the netherlands it's very hot uh, at this moment and very dry so the paint dries quickly so that's why i use it now then i start with what shall i do i will start with the darkest color of the sky so i put it on my brush and i can just take it from the palette i love it i don't have to think about anything only about where i'm gonna put it and i'm gonna put it all the way here and I leave some space for some of these subtle uh, clouds that I will paint in later on. So I just do it fairly freely like this. It's a little bit of this. So I leave some space at some points. And for the rest I just fill it in like this. So and then i stop because from here on the sky will get lighter so i just have to clean my brush a little bit I don't have to do too much effort but i just wipe off the excess paint like this now it's good enough and then i go to the second value like this this color and uh, i will put it uh, I don't blend it with the previous color because when I blend it now I uh, destroy this color of course in my brush so I, I'll, I don't let it touch too much yeah. so just, just like this and from here on the color will get slightly lighter again so now I can blend the two colors a little bit together like this at the places where I wanted that well maybe I just paint this like this, a little bit like this. You see? It's more than enough. Now we go to the lightest value for this subtle sky. And the funny thing is, at this moment it doesn't look subtle at all, it, lo it looks messy. But again, I wipe the excess paint off and I take the lightest color and I start here. Of course we see all kinds of colors there and variations but I just take the lightest color and I do it like this I don't I don't touch the previous value as you can see I just go around it and then here we get the very white clouds of course so I'll leave this open like this and now it's time to yeah, to start blending these two colors together so I take a fair amount of paint and then just wipe them together like this you see don't spend too much time on it let the paint do its job just put it through and it will go automatically yeah 
I'm not so satisfied with what I've done there, but of but okay, these things happen. I'll make it lighter, like this, okay. So you see, you have a lot of control when you just merge the colors together. And that's because we made these transition steps between the two colors. That makes the blending way more easy. Yeah, I like it to be, and I can adjust it a little bit. So here I like it to be a little bit darker again. So I add the darker value. I think like this, yeah. You can play with it, but don't spend too much time on it. And now it looks a little bit exaggerated because, but we get these clouds, these subtle, subtle clouds have to go in front of it. And don't throw away your painting at this stage because it looks ugly. That's normal. And that is because you, does, you haven't covered everything yet. So it, it just looks a little bit ugly. That's normal. You don't perceive the whole image yet. So don't mind that and uh, just go on. I still think this variation here can go on a little bit more downwards, like this maybe. Yeah, like this. I think I like it like this. Then I make it moist again with the mystifier. So I spray from a, quite a distance, so it, it stays wet longer. So now I go to the lighter values that I've made for the, uh, for the subtle uh, clouds. Now, now I just do this a little bit instinctively in the wet paint. I just make these marks and I don't have to be too precise about it at this stage. I just put this in like this and this I just indicate this, the places where I want to have a little bit light. You see? So this is slightly lighter than the sky and I blend it a little bit like this. I think it may need a little bit more of magenta here. So I add a little bit of magenta in it. But you see I can easily adjust the colors that I have on my palette because they are already there. So, And now I do my brushes like this. So perpendicular to the canvas to make these kind of strokes I see, you see, like this. So just play with the paint, wet and wet, that you see. And you take the picture as a point of reference a little bit. But these still are the darkest parts of the colors. So we'll brighten them up in a shortly, in a while. Like this again, here's a little bit more light. And then here I have this thing that goes a little bit so like this. You see, there I had left some space for this part. Maybe I add some more magenta here. But the, the, the color isn't that much lighter than the background. So it blends easily. You get very smooth transitions. See? Now I add some magenta here. Again, like this. And just try to follow the directions a little bit that you see the, the directions of the the clouds. Here it gets fairly lighter like this. Okay, so so we have a base color again. So and, and now I want to brighten it up a little bit more. Oh maybe here I can add some as well, you see. But now you see I haven't exaggerated at this moment. So nothing can go wrong. And now I'm gonna add some of the lighter value that I have here. So the lightest values and then I'm gonna just touch up at some places where I think there I see some lighter values. And I do this with brush strokes in the directions 
of the clouds that I see in the, in the photograph. Here I've forgotten a part that can be very light, relatively light, like this. You see, that's more than enough for here at this moment. Um, you, you see some, oh, that's a little bit too much. Well, that's a little bit too much, but we can easily adjust that. So here we see a stroke like this, maybe. You see here a little bit of this. And now it's getting a, at some spots, it gets a little bit too much, but I can adjust that. Uh, I will adjust that. So first put on some paint. Yeah, so now we have some variations between lighter and darker parts, but at some places it's a little bit too much, like here for instance. So what can I do? I just take the color of the sky and reduce the impact. You see, so I just paint wet and wet here, like this, and I just take back some of the sky color and soften it. And here again, I would like to add some more magenta touch to it. So maybe like this. Here it gets a little bit lighter, like this. So it's all very subtle. You see, in the directions that you see a little bit, like this, wet and wet. And you can't go wrong really, because the values I keep repeating it, but the values are close to each other. And now I go back to the darkest sky color because that was the color that we had here. And I add that to it to make it a little bit more smooth again. The lighter color here to make it a little bit smoother here. You see, it can't go wrong. And even it doesn't uh, matter what kind of brush you use and how you do your strokes. It's because the values are reasonably okay. I don't, won't say that this is a masterpiece. That's not what I mean by it. But it is the technique. It's the way of thinking. And for these clouds, I will would like to start with the darkest color that I've made. So I put that here in between, you see. The, the darkest parts of the clouds of, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of the sky color that you see reflected maybe. Here it is a little bit lighter and a little bit gray. Uh, I'll take a little bit of that gray paint from here, so like this, you see? Or maybe a little bit of this gray also. So the whole point is you have colors on your palette and as long as it is wet, you can blend them easily and you can make it look a little bit smooth. And uh, it even if you take a close look, it doesn't look smooth, but the values are close to each other so it looks smooth. That's the whole trick in this case. Okay, that was the darkest part as far as I know in the, at this stage for the for the clouds. Now I just go, uh, I like to see how it is gonna work and this is still wet so I think that now I'm gonna work the other way around. I get the lightest color that I have for the lightest parts in the clouds like here. Oh I just uh, messed up a little bit. I want to put in light parts. Well this doesn't really look like the photograph uh, at all uh, at this stage, but that's no problem. And then here we have lighter parts. So I only look at where are the light parts, where are the darker parts. So this, uh, and, and at this stage, I just, so I only look at where are the lightest parts in the clouds that I see. And this, for instance, is all very light. Like this, see? And I do this, uh, usually I like working from dark to light, but in this case I wanted to get a grip on the, f 
final contrast to see that in an, at an early stage. And here it can use a little bit of magenta. So add a little bit, oh, that's too much. Oh, maybe like this. But here in the background, there are some lighter parts, but uh, overall it gets darker here. See, so I think these are the lightest lights and maybe I need to go over them a second time later on because sometimes it doesn't cover that well the first time. Now it looks really weird, don't you think? And uh, there's one thing I want to do now and that is make the colors blend a little bit with the sky color. So I take a little bit of the lightest sky color that I used here in the background and I just go like this to soften it a little bit around the corners. At some parts. Not, not everywhere, but at this stage I just want to give it a little bit more form. So a little bit, little bit softening at some points, not everywhere, like here. You see, let it be a little bit more subtle. Because again, I can always make it less subtle very easy. Th that's enough, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, now I go to uh, a slightly darker light color. <laughs> and so I have light colors here for the clouds. But uh, yeah, some are a uh, little bit darker than the others. So for instance, I see that here a lot and here. So I just put it over it. Oh, here I missed a spot for the darkest color. So I have to do that in a later stage. Uh, so here it gets dark, here it is a little bit, so a little bit of that grey color. You see, a little bit grey, like this, and, and maybe here, yes. And maybe a little bit here. And it can use a little bit of darker colors as well later on, but at this stage, we go on like this. So that's a little bit too light for there. Okay, but here can be darker like this and I blend it a little bit with the sky color because here it goes subtle from, but it has to be a little bit darker as well. So I, I just leave it, I just add a little bit of the gray color at this space. But the darkest parts I still have to do. And I do a little bit like this, brush strokes in the directions that I see, of course. Well, of course, th that's the easiest thing to do. And I add a little bit of that gray color here as well. Here is all a little bit gray, like this. You see, we get a little bit of a glimpse of the result. And uh, now this color is a little bit too hard, so I'll just mix the gray that I had through that blue and I'll just wipe these two together a little bit. So, like this. And here I had missed a spot that was reasonably blue there, so like this, you see. But because all the colors are on my palette, I can very easily paint. I, I, I'm painting at this moment. I just think, okay, what can I do now with the paint that I have? So now I go to the darkest gray I had pre-mixed and uh, again, still that darkest gray isn't that dark. It's this uh, value. So I see it around here, for instance. And there's a darker part like this. See, well, and then this, this will blend with the sky color more easily because this darker color here for these clouds, you see again, this was a very dark blue color relatively, but now it gets less dark because it is closer to the tonal value of the darkest part of the clouds, so like this. And then I can also easily blend them together so that there is not that hard edge. You don't want that hard edge here, in this case, with these clouds at the, the bottom.
because that is what you see on the photo there isn't that big of a contrast so like this and here you have some like this okay and uh, to be honest uh, we are already almost there can you see that so this is good for starters for a base but now I just can refine it a little bit so for instance the uh, I need a little bit of that lighter gray no, uh, still for here what is this like this I can blend it a little bit but for instance the the lightest parts aren't that light anymore because I went over it and that's a kind of th uh, thing so I take the lightest part again on my brush and I just build it up again a little bit so just a bit a little bit like this and a little bit first I do the lightest part just on top of it like this see and use your brush maybe the tip of your brush at some uh, spots to just make some variation in detail see and don't do it everywhere just at little spots you add a little bit of light again so the the previous layer still does its job it is still there and it gives variation and when you do it like this like this here a lighter part here a lighter part and when it is too much but at some spots it is a little bit too exaggerated right now I think then I can easily adjust it again by uh, no take a slightly darker gray that I of course I have on my palette and I just wipe it a little bit through it like this you see so you can play with it huh? it's fun and again just use the photo as reference you don't have to put in all exact details as you see it there I don't do that either I I just use it a little bit and then go my own way here in the darkest part maybe there's sometimes a slightly lighter part but then you take a lighter gray so you don't take that that uh, the whitest white of course but you just take a lighter gray that you put through it maybe here I see a little bit of lighter clouds over there lighter parts that's enough you see and uh, same goes for here maybe that is a little bit exaggerated here too much too light then I do it like this I just add a little bit of gray again well and again uh, here the contrast is a little bit too high but the sky here has become a little bit too light so I add a little bit of gray it's still a little bit wet so I can adjust it a little bit like this you see it's still a little bit wet so there's no problem and now here are some more pronounced clouds I just do a little bit of this maybe here a little bit touching up but now we're getting at the stage that I think this is already good enough you can uh, go as far as you like with this, uh, this these kind of things and I still I'm not completely satisfied with this and sometimes uh, you see uh, some slight that that's something I uh, wanted to tell as well sometimes you see of course uh, also slight variations maybe in this white here I can add a little bit of yellow and you can see it, it has uh, white isn't always uh, never uh, to be honest uh, pure white it contains a little bit of color of course and sometimes in clouds you see some 
well, maybe a little bit a touch of yellow. Sometimes you see a little touch of uh, orange maybe or magenta. So there's all kinds of variations are possible. But uh, yeah, in this case, I think that is uh, what I wanted to show. Oh, that's a bit ugly. But again, also uh, keep in mind that there's uh, so in most paintings, these clouds um, aren't that important. They are in the background. This is still a bit harsh. I want to mix it a little bit like this and make it a little bit darker there. Like this, maybe. See? So that's a little bit what I wanted to show. Um, keep in mind uh, all skies, of course, are different. All clouds are different. You cannot you cannot speak of one sort of sky. But but always, I, I used to struggle with skies uh, a lot. But um, when you practice this a few times with just some photographs, and you don't have to be too precise, just like this. But when you practice it a, uh, a few times, and you get the hang of it from uh, when it is subtle, you need values and colors that lie close to each other. And when it isn't subtle. You need bigger contrast, you can, you can build the contrast. Now I hope that was helpful. Please hit the like button if you like the video and uh, subscribe if you want to see more content. And uh, well, when you click on the bell, you get uh, notified when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.